Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Josh. Uh, this is Two Guys, One Car. Welcome to our car. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it starts with Two Guys, One Car. That's no, it's, the name. It should start It's with Welcome to Our Car. No, but it has to start with Two Guys, One Car because that's the name of the thing. Just, you know, just get in the back seat. <laughs> right along with us. <laughs> <laughs> we just did an ice bath at Sam, Sam Harvey's. Oh, did ya? But in the garage, yeah, in the garage, there's a chest freezer. And it's, um, yeah, you just get in there. He gave me the key, actually. So, if you're ever keen to come. Just get in there. Sam Harvey's at home web forge. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. It's so good. I got, like, I went into, like, a hypothermic state yesterday. Did you? So I did, like, t- <laughs> it's like we're talking about it, like, it's like a, oh, wow, like, good yeah, job. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I rate it. Savage. <laughs> no, but, um... So usually, you know Wim Hof? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, usually we do like two to three, four rounds of his breathing in the ice bath yeah. and then get out, which is anywhere from five to 10, 15 minutes. Mm. Um, and then yesterday I rocked up and the boys weren't there yet. So I just like got in and started going, doing rounds. So I just felt really good and I just kept going. And um, by the time they got there, I I was in there for like, I don't know the exact time because I wasn't timing, but it was 20 minutes, give or take, <laughs> maybe a bit more. And then I get out and I just, I felt different to what I'd ever felt before. <laughs> like the way I could describe it, I don't know, I kind of felt really hot on the surface of my skin, but I just felt really mentally sort of not there, like really cloudy, really like spacey. And then I just started doing some like push ups and breathing. And then I just got really cold and I was like, oh, I'm just going to go to my car to grab something. But I was going there to, use the heater because I was freaking I don't know yeah. why you didn't just say it yeah I mean, the ego did, <laughs> did it have like a long term effect so after you hopped out like obviously you went to get warm yeah. but like when you were walking there was that like did you feel like delirious or yeah a little bit so a little bit delirious and I walk to my car and I grab my keys and I'm at at my car door trying to get the key in the hole like shaking like that <laughs> and I was like oh no and I eventually get it in start the car have the heater on and I'm just like in front of the heater shaking and I'm like, this isn't good. Like, I need hot water. So I just, like, got out of my car, ran up to their apartment. and was just, like, freaking, like, Sam, Sam, like, knocking on the door. Like, it's, like, 6 a.m. or something, 6.30. <laughs> like, dude, let me in. His roommate opens up and then uh, lets me in. And then I jump in the shower. And he was just, one of his mates did 24 and a half minutes and had, like, the exact same thing as me. And then um, I was in there for, like, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, like, just warming back up. But it was genuinely scary. Like, I was genuinely scared. What do you reckon the longest you would have done up until then would have been? It was 15 or 16 minutes. Wow, so this was, like, substantially. Yeah, and that was, like, that was a good point. Like, getting out at 15, 16, whatever that was, felt okay. Yeah. But this was, like, just too much. Yeah. Yeah, the 15, 16 minutes, it's almost like you feel better. Yeah. Because you've had, like, it's almost the first two rounds. First round or two is kind of, like, you're getting into it, but then you just are like, I'm home. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're just sitting there like, this is where I should be. Like, yeah. and then you can sit there for another, like, you know, eight or so minutes, and then you feel fine. But, like, this, they, the reason why is, like, like, Josh, well, I don't know, but I'm just assuming, is there was this leaderboard? No, that wasn't why. Oh, that wasn't why. That wasn't why. There was this leaderboard that's in there now yeah. that just has the times. And I was like, as soon as I walked in, I was just like, that's so bad that that's there. Because in my head, I was like, I want 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, no, I, I shouldn't think about the time. Like, that's just like, it shouldn't be about that. It should just be about like the benefits I'm getting from the ice bath. Which is why I don't time myself. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't timed myself since Josh hasn't because I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Why would you time yourself? Just how funny is that though? That that's like ingrained in us as humans that like you, you oh, I just want the benefits. But then as yeah. soon as there's some level of like yardstick that it's like, oh, that's the possibility that I could aim for. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to go for. Yes. Or like, I'm going to stretch that yeah. because I need to be top of the mm-hmm. leaderboard, which like, in essence means nothing. Yeah. But like, to you, that's like the most crazy. It means everything. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it is true. You just put all the benefits aside and which you we, just want to win. And we were talking about today, like as in the idea of the 24 minutes, like Wim Hof pushes people to actually do that yeah. and like feel the benefits that. from it and beyond that, obviously. Yeah. So it's like, there is the ability to do it. Safety. But it's almost like once, I think it's maybe around the 15, 16, whatever minute from there, it becomes skill. Yeah. Like you need to have like training time. Like you actually need, you can't just go in there. I don't think. And actually just go. Yeah. I don't think you can be a self-proclaimed like Wim Hof breather 
and yes. then get in there and, and yeah. do it for that long. Yeah. yeah. Which is what we are. Yeah, literally, you just do it. You've, you've reached the precipice of amateur. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, now you need to know what it takes to, to yeah, do that. I've read his, read his book, listened to his podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't make me qualified yeah. to yeah. go and do it. Clearly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but that, yeah. that was that was an interesting experience. Because we just like, the mate who saw Josh was like running down the stairs. And then he's like, like just like went past my shoulder and I was like, oh, hey, Cal. And like, we're like, oh, what the hell? How you going, man? And he's like, oh, I got to run. Like, he's like American. He's like, yeah, I got to go, man. Like, he's like, uh, but Josh is in a really bad state. But uh, have a good day. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, what? What's wrong with Josh? Uh, so funny. Yeah. It's so funny. It's so freaky. Have you ever done a knife bar? Yeah, I have, but I've, I've, like, when you said 15 minutes, I was thinking, oh, that's, <laughs> I haven't done a nice bath then. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is very different, like, going in there, like, without any, just, like, just, just raw dogging it and just yeah. going straight in, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, with the breathing. And you just have to ventilate. If you get in that cold water shock, you just have to ventilate, and then yeah. there's no chance you're surviving yeah. in there. Mm, yeah. Have you you did cryo as well? Hey, cryo chamber? No, I've ne- I've never done it. I've I, the only thing I've done is contrast showers, like uh, the the hot cold stuff. Where it's mm-hmm. like um, when I was playing footy back in the day, we used yeah. to go there for recovery, and, and I, I found that was epic. And then we would yeah. sit in, like, would do the hot cold bath, like mm-hmm. two minutes in the ice, then you would jump yeah. across, and that was that was fine. But <clears throat> like doing a prop one uh, like i've also i guess after a few runs i've come back and and jumped in but yeah. 15 minutes I, i'd be breaking that up into to three blocks kind of yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah but yeah no we like i would say we usually do eight minutes is probably the, yeah, three the normal three rounds yeah, which takes about eight minutes yeah. yeah i would say that's usually the norm but you should um, definitely come yeah, yeah. Oh, it's um, it's okay yeah because dude it's like based off what josh has told me about like like who you are what you do what not it's like mm-hmm. dude you you destroy it. Like you love it. Guns. I just like the idea of it. Like that's yeah. that's one of the things. Like you said, there's yeah. the benefits is, is yeah. good, but it's also another area that you can push yourself mm. and yes. just say like, oh, exactly. what's possible with the, it. One of the I reckon it's fifty fifty for me. Like it, I really mentally, it's just like some days, especially in the mornings. So like yesterday was six a.m. Just like oh, start my day like this, just in the yeah. ice bath, and like the days where the ice is just everywhere. Like we we literally witnessed it today with a mate who rocked up after we'd done it. And like he, <laughs> I don't really think he's seen it with a whole lot of ice. No, he hasn't. So he hasn't seen it with like heaps of ice, like really, really cold. Because okay. sometimes it'll be like, because it's chest freezer, sometimes yeah. it'll be like, you know, five degrees, six degrees, which is freezing, like very cold. Yeah. But today it was like right on zero. And like he, we just, because we had it shut waiting for him, open it up. I mean, he's like, oh my God. Like, he's like, oh my God. He went from being like keen to just like, nah, just, shit. Yeah, the yeah. conversation changed. Yeah. yeah. It's, the other thing with the with the ice stuff as well that I've always like kind of found interesting is there's that level of, um, it's like invigorating. And mm. at first, the, the concept of hopping in ice, you're like, wrong again. There's no way that I'm, I'm going to mm. do that. But then you do it and you're like, oh, that was actually was pretty good. Mm. And then you start to crave it. And yeah. you're like, weirdly, you're craving something that you like officially hate kind of mm-hmm. thing. It's like, what's going on in my brain yeah. to, to have like enjoyed the stretch so much mm. that now I want to do something yes. that, that sucks because yeah. I know the benefits for it. Like uh-huh. it's, it's, yeah. It becomes that addiction cycle. Yeah, because it literally like scientifically, it actually does work like that. Yeah. So it's like your dopamine will spike. It won't spike. It'll just slowly rise to the point of like which, which the same levels of which cocaine would give you, yeah. and then it will slowly drop back down to your baseline. Wow. So it's actually a healthier way of receiving that addiction type hit from something than an actual illicit drug would be. So it's it's theoretically in terms of that system in your brain, the dopaminergic system, it's actually the same thing, it's wild. which That's is crazy. So, wild. so that is that feeling like mm. you just want to go back. Like I want it all the time, all the time. and sometimes multiple times a day. I'm like, oh, I'm knackered. I don't want a coffee. I want an ice bar. It sucks that people don't know that too. Mm. Like that, it's like you, you people are craving these like short term fixes in like the most like horrible like areas. Yeah, Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. Thinking Literally. like that'll give me my fix, and it's like no, nah, no. Nah. Like there's yeah. other avenues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, healthier, yeah. better Same for you. Thing. Yeah. And I guess it comes down to like the lack of education, but also the accessibility issue. Yeah. Like it's so easy to go and grab a Red Bull can off a shelf, and that's probably because they've funneled more effort into that. Mm-hmm. But like, how do you distribute ice bars to everyone? Becoming more readily available, I guess. And, like, the idea of, like, just pushing stuff out, like, for Sam and stuff. Like, they literally just use a chest freezer. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can just you just figure it out. You know what I mean? If it's yeah. at home, it's yeah. like, even just the cold shower gig. 
Mm. Same thing. Just yeah. go have a cold shower. Like by yeah. cold, it's not like colder than usual. It's like actually just turn yeah, it cold, to cold, cold and then turn it yeah. on, you know? Yeah. Like having that as the option, I guess. But yeah, moving forward, there should be a lot more availability of it because that is like, it is the way to go. Yeah. As soon as we, as soon as we move out, that is just like, that is priority the number. Yeah, <laughs> forget a bed, yeah, forget yeah. any food in the fridge. Give me the ice bath. It's like my, it's like my coffee machine. It's the ice bath yeah, instead. Honestly. Yeah. Have you yeah. done any like sauna or anything? Like yeah, I've, I've done a fair yeah. bit of sauna stuff. I actually oh, I've blanket. No I've way. Got a sauna blanket. Like what the fight is you? Yeah, yeah. The the um, oh. my high. No way. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty good, but mm. I just I don't like. I do know, notice the difference between sitting in a sauna blanket. Mm. What I actually kind of rate about it is you just set it up, like lie down and you'll kind of zone out. Like just a really good place, like mentally to mm-hmm. kind of, um, and it, it, it is hot, but it, like it just doesn't bring like the same level of sweat, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's... So what is it you get? Is it a suit? It's, it feels like a suit, but it's it's actually just like, you know the best way to describe it? It's like a radiation blanket. You know, if you've ever like, gone and got an yeah. x-ray oh, yeah. and they put, it's, it feels like that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. And you just plug it in, like line it, it heats up. Um, but yeah, okay. definitely not the same level. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And you, how do you clean it? Oh, you, it unzips. It unzips. Okay. So it unzips oh. and then you lay it out and then you got to just like hit it with spray, let yeah. it dry out. Like it, it feels pretty <laughs> filthy at first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then <coughs> if you actually want to level it up, you can just like, you know, wear trackies and stuff oh, when you hop yeah. in. and really Actually, like... you do see the fighters doing that when they cut yeah, weight, yeah. like hoodie on, yeah. just in the blanket. Yeah. Like, dying you're literally drained of all their energy just sitting in there i'm actually really disappointed before um greenland i didn't spend more time doing sauna stuff because yeah, okay. like I, I would have liked to have done some running with the sauna suit because i think that was like the thing that most replicated what i did really yeah yeah wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. In- because you're running with so many layers on you run with so many layers on but it's like there's two different temperatures there's like the, the internal temperature of you just like sweating being wet heavy drained but then there's the like the exterior of just freezing cold. Like I can't take a layer off. I can't expose my skin to like the yeah, the elements. Like there was none of that. So as as much as everyone's like, oh, that would have been so cold. It's like the cold is definitely a factor. But like doing that much running in a day and holding on to like your sweat and being that heavy, mm. it just it like it cooks you. Like that's mm. what made it so much harder than I expected. So. Yeah. If I had my time over again, like everyone thinks, oh, like, did you go down and do some like running in the snow and all that kind of stuff? It's like, yeah, it might have helped, but mm. the best thing would have been to just hit it in a sauna suit. Wow. But yeah, for context, like tell us and everyone what you did. Yeah, so um, the about four years ago, I saw a, um, a YouTube video. Yeah, everyone's been down those YouTube rabbit yeah, holes yeah, before. Yeah. And um, it, I saw this race, like the was the Polar Circle Marathon, mm-hmm. um, and I just saw people running on ice and thought, oh, that looks pretty good um, as far as a you know, life experience. Yeah. But uh, as, as far as like actioning what it looked like, um, I didn't know, you know mm-hmm. how it would be to get there, like who enters this race, do you have to be of a certain kind of standard? So I kind of parked the idea, but with it, it was stuck there for a while and I just kept going back to it. And um, because I'm a, I'm a school teacher, it's my occupation, uh, this year I had long service leave coming up. And so the whole kind of premise for me was, well, what are you going to do with your long service leave block? And so these like two kind of, you know, diverging ideas just <laughs> just married back <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. And, um, and, and then the next minute I'd, I'd looked into to what it would take. Um, weirdly, as I went to book it, um, one of my colleagues was, was sitting in the room with me and she just kind of put her head over my shoulder and I was like, well, well you're going all the way to Greenland. So why wouldn't you do the Polar Bear Challenge, which is the half marathon and the full marathon in the same like block. And so I thought, oh yeah, two days, like, you know, there'll be select races. They might be on separate days, but they're literally the, the day after each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with the way the weather works in Greenland, um, particularly the, the part that I ran at, um, it, it, it was so much a case of, oh, we'll run it when the race is able to be run. So it could have been spread out or it had to be in a really confined block. Uh-huh. And, and as it as it turned out, it ended up being way more concentrated than <laughs> than we would have liked or, or they would have liked. But I think it was probably, in hindsight, maybe the best part about yeah. it uh, because it, it was such a stretch and so much more beyond uh, You know, when I said I would go. 
yeah. it was so much different to what actually happened. Yeah, that's amazing because you did the half marathon on the Saturday, yeah, and then the full marathon on the Sunday. Yeah, so traditionally, what happens is everyone runs the full marathon mm-hmm. and and gets that out the way, and then the half marathon is kind of the you know the celebration leg where you just like limp through it maybe yeah. or just a little yeah, bit yeah, sore yeah. but they're not usually looking to hustle times but yeah. uh, because of this time of year they, they hadn't had this for ages but on the Thursday that we arrived um, the temperature was five degrees now everyone's kind of like oh well, five degrees is still pretty cold but what that does to the ice sheet is um, kind of creates havoc because mm. you've got uh, it becomes like ice melt and it's, it's super slippery so the, at the race briefing, the organizers told us that, uh, you know, they, they can see snow coming and it's going to get really cold, uh, but not until the Sunday. And so they made the decision to run the half marathon sure. from the polar bear leg on Saturday. So everyone who was just there to do a half marathon, they all ran on Sunday. But uh, the people who were doing the half yeah, and the full, cool. they had to run on Saturday um, in a, a, a warmer uh, kind of temperature. Mm-hmm. But also like a, a oh, way more kind of... I was going to say the but, conditions make yeah. it like way more difficult. Yeah, well, and, and the other thing about that was they delayed the start of the half marathon hoping that they would get some of that snow to make the, the track safer mm. uh, and the snow never came. So it pushed back the start time. So I think that by the time we actually got running, it was maybe about 10.30 or 11 on the Saturday. Um, and then we were back on the bus at like 5.30 on the Sunday yeah. morning, heading out to start the oh. marathon. So it was just, it was such a, um, confined. such a confined like idea of, oh, you're running this, then you'll get a good recovery, then you'll go run the big one. And mentally for me, like I'd never run a marathon before. So it was wild, yeah. like to your first marathon. Oh my God, no, you're crazy. On the ice, yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, and, and I think that that was also this idea that I kind of also had resting in the back of my mind was, if I'm going to run a marathon, like it's going to be bad regardless, like respect to anyone who is willing to kind of run a marathon. I know that these days the new standard is like Ned Brockman runs a hundred K's a day and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and you rate that so highly and it gives, I think we love the idea of striving to be that new level of elite, mm-hmm. but at the same time, the, the standards have just been blown so far out of the water is what like human potential looks mm-hmm. like. And so, I was kind of realistic that a marathon is still a really, really tough, yeah. uh, tough gig. And so to do a hard marathon would have been a, you know, a, a very good stepping stone, I guess. Mm-hmm. I was like, not. With the, with the marathon thing, well, yeah, firstly, that's nuts. That I actually didn't know that. <laughs> you hadn't run one before the Greenland one, which is fun. Like, because I've run, like, I've run two marathons, like, did the half Ironman with Josh. Like, to think of what that would look like on ice, that's just, that's just disgusting. Like, I cannot even fathom that and that's what i was going to come to is that i think for people like they think oh you ran a marathon in greenland it's like oh you did a marathon overseas they're not really even thinking about like i feel like unless you've actually done it like or something similar like you've done a marathon to consider now doing that experience on wet slippery ice it's just like that and it goes for like like this is not that is substantially harder like way harder yeah so the the variables in that were what was kind of the saving grace was i i ha- had an expectation of it was going to be really hard but there was a limit as far as how much i could actually know it's like kind of mm-hmm. are, you, are you textbook smart and you've got been given the theory or the blueprint or are you like practically smart have you spent time in it and the thing for me was I, I did all the race briefing readings. I, I saw what their advice was with equipment and all that kind of stuff, but there's no leveler until you yeah. like walk out on the ice and see what you're dealing with. <laughs> um, and, and also just how slippery it was. Um, there's, there was a guy who, who flew over there from Melbourne actually. And um, on the day, the Friday where we went out and tested our equipment on the ice cap, he slipped over and got like six stitches in his head and oh he, he wasn't able to run. So wow. like, I think this idea of that's um, so real of running in the ice is kind of like winter wonderland you know it's just yeah. like reindeers here and it's real fluffy snow but that that ice sheet is is really kind of tough and so deadly unforgiving like incredibly and it's it's probably the best way to describe it is kind of at the beach like how you've got soft sand and then if you walk out onto a rock shelf you've got kind of like mossy rock mm. and so you might run along the sand but then as soon as you get to the the rock like it, it changes everything about how you walk and the speed that you go at. And that was exactly what 
running on the ice cap was yeah. like. So was everyone falls over? Uh, on, the, on the Friday, definitely. Uh, uh, <laughs> the beautiful thing was that snow that they said was coming did arrive. And so oh, I think when we woke up uh, to go out to the ice cap on the Sunday morning for the start of the marathon, it was minus 19 degrees on our um, on our Wow. But uh, like the start of the race is kind of 38 kilometers away towards the ice. So I just, people have said, how cold did it get? And uh, I genuinely can't give a, an accurate no, right. reading. I know it was colder up there than it was when we left. Colder than minus 19. But it was, it was freezing. And, and you're yeah. running a marathon. Yeah. And, and so like <laughs> another, another part, as, as I kind of talk through it, there's not, not trauma, but there's, there's moments that you just fixated on. And uh, with three minutes to go, because you get bust out there, uh, they sort of sit there and, and say, okay, there's three minutes till the race happens. And because there's aid stations, you can put different pieces of equipment in those yeah. uh, in those mm -hmm. tubs and they drive them to the aid stations for you. And um, you, you're kind of trying to get your last minute race prep, throw the stuff where it needs to go. And then at the same time, you're like, oh, in two minutes, like now um, it's counting, you're out at the start line because they don't want you standing there it's just the get off still, yeah. off the bus and start running. Literally straight off. And there's the, Which is so different like, because everything we're used to is you get the ability to stand at the start line, get the feels out. But yep. this mm -hmm. is like you're sitting on a, a nice comfy bus and it's like, all right, out, go. Yeah, dude, like the Sydney one, I was there for like an hour and a half yep. beforehand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Being <laughs> being held in the in the, in yeah, the cattle yeah, track. Yeah, and yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah. And, and so what made that really interesting was there's this moment where you go down the stairs mm -hmm. of the bus to go out to the start line. And you just feel this like cold punch you in the face. And it's, it's, I would liken it to if you've ever paddled out in surf that's too big for you and you try to be calm and you know that that's the right thing to do, but there's just a massive part of you that can't be because mm -hmm. your instinct is to just turn around and stay on the bus. Be like, you know, crank the heater. Like yeah, that's, yeah. that's not safe. There's the real yeah. element of fear and this is my life. Yeah, absolutely. And so that was, was such a kind of, a shifting moment where I felt this this kind of switch where you change from oh it's fine this will be a good experience can't wait to run past a glacier and I'll be so distracted by the scenery look at what I'm doing yeah yeah that's right like all that just goes out the window and there's just this moment of I'm, I'm genuinely scared like the, mm. there was a large amount of fear of how cold it was and also being sore from Saturday yeah. I was kind of thinking like I've never run a marathon before. I'm sore, and these conditions are just wild. Dude, that's so fucked up. Yeah, how like, do you how do you switch that mentality? Well, uh, do you know what? I don't know if there was a conscious switch. I think you just start doing it, and uh, like I I know before all my um my uh, you know what do you call it your credentials your, mm. the reading all your your smart watches and mm. stuff all that kind of stuff it showed the the heart rate was really high like to begin with, mm. oh, and. Yeah. And as you start to go through the, through the race, like you just almost have these like micro blocks of like, mm -hmm. what's my next goal? Yeah. And so the first thing that I had to do on the Sunday was, was get over the ice cap. And, and like, even though you're thinking about what you've seen so far and you know you've walked out there, every single time you're, um, your foot gets compromised a little bit or it has to change to an angle, there's a little bit of slippage before your, um, your chains kind of actually catch you. And that really cooks your knees. And so being sore, oh, yeah, you're kind yeah. of, you're walking a little bit gingerly to begin with. Yeah. Um, and, and just all, all of those, those little things, it's just like, okay, because I know that that's what the response is, I've just got to get through the ice cap and then things will be okay. And then like, as you progress through the race, like you get off the ice cap and then you realize how cooked your legs are from it. Mm. And you're like, okay, what's the next thing mm. that I have to tick yeah. off yeah. To, to grow in? Yeah, so it's just breaking it down into yeah. digestible I like how it wasn't pieces. like a switch. It was just more like, I just went, weren't, well, fuck it, this is my reality. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. just gonna go. Yeah. Like, it's just like, there's no switch. It's not like, cause the switch is almost arguing that you're making yourself comfortable. You were just uncomfortable and just fine with it. Yeah. Like, it was just like, yeah, I, uh, the, the language of fine with it is like, <laughs> it's like, I, I don't think that there was any element of, of fine with it the whole yeah. way. Um, I think when I got to like 41 kilometers, like I, I really wanted to take photos and kind of document a little bit of it and still kind of keep the integrity of getting the run done. Yeah. Mm. And my phone lasted about 15 minutes before it just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, but I did take a battery pack and so 
towards on the, the run. yeah so just just a small one and yeah. I, I stuffed it into my um, in my pack so I um I was able to to yeah. plug that in with about five k to go get some charge back yeah. and then Feel. did your water freeze yeah so that's that's a, a really good um yeah, point so th they did say at the race briefing that if anything um, that you're carrying on you needs to be discarded uh, because it's one literally run road that takes you back to mm. Kangaloo Airport which is where the finish is. They said you can just throw the stuff on the track because the bus will see it and we'll just we'll clean the course. Um, and so that was maybe a harrowing moment that I had is um, after you get off the ice cap, you go through this kind of desert section. Mm. And um, I, I'd noticed the camelback and I thought, oh, someone must have dropped it. And I kept running. But then I saw a second camelback and kind of stopped and inspected it. And I realized that what had happened was these people had been ditching the camelbacks because the liquid had been freezing freeze in the tube. In the tube, and it was just useless. So wow. that was kind of the moment that, you know, when you talk about these little micro goals, like that was a reality check for me to go, oh, that's that's how cold it is. Mm. Like that's really how cold it is. Um, yeah, and what do you do at that point? Because you're you go into it so dependent upon like water and hydration, and then to have your water source freeze, like. What do you do to make sure yours doesn't? So I guess this is like the glamorous part of the run is like I talked about the aid stations mm -hmm. is you kind of know that particularly through that middle section that there's going to be places to stop and, and get given like drinks and they, they'll they give you supply. So I guess that what you had to carry wasn't as um, crucial because you would still be able to make it through the race with, with their supplies. Yeah. Um, but what's kind of cool was they had this electrolyte like elderflower drink they would oh. heat up for you. Oh, oh nice. just and you had a plastic. It was, it was just like getting hot Gatorade. It was yeah. amazing. Oh. Um, but you, I've never desired hot Gatorade before. <laughs> yeah, but I can right. imagine in that yeah, moment. I imagine you were just like, it, it's life changing. <laughs> uh, it really, it really is. Like the the type of thing that you know. I reckon if I tasted it now, it'd be like my top two drinks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But when when they fill up your your like kind of plastic cup mm. and you take the first sip, like you really get hit with that like euphoric like how good is that? Mm. But as soon as you've held your cup for about thirty seconds, like it's just gone lukewarm and then it's like cold. gone like genuinely cold and you, wow, it's hell? it's really like depressing because you, you've been hit with this like <laughs> yeah. high high level warm drink and then it's straight away. Yeah. And, Kind of like someone handing you a coffee and saying you can have a sip, yeah. and then it's and then it's like yeah, it's, then done. it's uh, done. Damn. So what is so what is your equipment? What are you wearing and what are you carrying? Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, it's all about layers. Like layers was was wholly and solely in the game, and so underneath you've got a thermal base layer, um, and that's both your your long pants and your um, you know your shirt. Yeah. Um, and look, as as good as that is, it's also kind of like I was talking about before with the sweat, like the detriment is you're just sweating into yourself, into your own thermals and you literally are getting cooked from the inside out. Um, and then you've got a fleece layer on top of that. Um, I had Gore-Tex pants. I only had two layers, um, two layers on the, on my bottoms. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your soft shell jacket over the top. Um, and then you've obviously got like your neck gaiters. Um, you've, you've got, um, some people wore snow snow goggles. I didn't. I, I took sunglasses. Yeah. But um, really, like, what was great about it was it wasn't a windy day, particularly yeah. on the ice cap. So I think if there had been wind, that would have been that critical. Would be but yeah, it, it was it was quite a still morning. So yeah. um, in that respect, I was able to get away with that. Um, but running with the, you know, with the face yeah, like thing yeah, up yeah. up to your eyes was still like confronting and. It's just that that hot cool. moisture, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then every time you expose it, then your yeah, lips just go, yeah, yeah mm. cold instantly. So that that was kind of good, but just battling that. Oh, absolutely, and and not being someone who, I guess, is um, has spent time at the snow and and that growing up, like mm -hmm. these these temperatures, maybe to someone who's like you know grown up skiing or snowboarding might not have been as confronting but like i had we li else. yeah it's literally like what 20 That's... 20 degrees or something 25 degrees right now yeah. we're going into australian summer yeah. we're nowhere near that yeah, level no, of cold yeah, yeah. yeah and so and that's exactly right so when people asked about the training like even if you did go to the ski fields at that point you in time you, you're like where are you coming up with that like you know 18 mm. degree like gap yeah, um, yeah it's yeah. just it's just not there so yeah. that was that was really intriguing for me to to experience that yeah. and go oh that's what this cold feels mm. like and then shoes you said you're wearing 
chains. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah. so yeah, sorry, normal um, my normal shoes um, you can you can do it in in runners, but yeah. then you've got to put um, chains over the top. So um, things that I had were called yak tracks, but a lot of people went with uh, like these neo spikes that were um, sharper and and longer. Um, but the yak tracks they still did the trick. Um, and the the interesting part actually was when you came off the ice, a lot of people ditched their their spikes straight away. And really? coming off the ice, like the, the track uh, or the road back was, was really covered with ice anyway. Oh. So like my logic was when we got dropped off on the bus, the bus had to put its chains on to get through oh, the road out. to get us to drop to the drop off point. So I'm going to keep my chains on going out. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I'm really glad I did that because I oh, saw yeah. some people have some real hairy stacks yeah. oh, and yeah. that was based entirely on Bam. them wanting to ditch their chains. Oh, wow. Um, so that was that was something that I just you know I'd never went worn my chains before, and that's another thing is okay like you have this running technique, this form, this gait that all gets thrown out the window the second you're now running with chains on your feet. The, the thing that really deflated me at the beginning was I, I thought I'll put my run caper on, and um, mm. as I kind of you know push that, when you're on the ice you are so slow, and so like one of my first kilometers was like nine and a half k's. Yeah. <laughs> Because you have to go really no, slow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, this is going to be a long day. Like yeah. I, all these ideas of, oh, maybe I could kind of swindle at four and a half. I don't know what the cold's going to be like, mm. how much of a, you know, a detractor that'll be. And then as soon as I ran that first K on the ice, so I like, just was oh, like, oh, okay, get, get rid of that get timing of, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, this is going to be just a slog. Strap in for a long day. Yeah. And did it get tough mentally? Like were there any points where you're like, I, I don't know if I can keep going or... Yeah, there was, there was one part, and this, this kind of the, the thing is, I knew that there was an aid station at uh, 22 k's, hmm. and when I got off the, uh, the ice, I think it's about 10 or 11. I'll have to fact check myself on this. I'll go back and look at the, hmm. the race map, but um, one of the things that I wanted to do was adjust my uh, thermal layer, and I put my hands under my like jacket and under my thermal, and it was just soaked because I took my glove off to do it. Oh. And so... It was, it was genuinely so wet. And so when I put my hand back into my glove, it basically just filled the inside of my gloves oh, with, like, with water. No. And so I took my other glove off to try and kind of fix it. And there was water like from the, the sweat and on my, yeah. on my oh. hand that then made the second hand cold. No. So the thing that I actually was concerned about, and the race briefing is really clear about any, any sign of frostbite, the Danish doctors that are there and will be at the aid stations, they just pull you. And so I wanted to make sure that I was able to stay in the race, but I could feel my fingertips just like freezing. Um, and there was nowhere for me to kind of wipe. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and also like taking your, taking your gloves out or oh gloves off goodness. then and trying to like dry your hands on like a backpack and stuff. Yeah. Like there just wasn't anything that, um, that was able to help me. So when I got to the 22K station, I actually got on the bus and was able to get a towel and, oh. and dry my hands. But mm. that period leading up to I really thought that this is going to be the end of it and it's not that I'm like my spirit's still there like I still think I can finish the race but if they if they told me that you know it's like it's too edgy like you're, you're, you're out done. then that would have been the most deflating thing like oh. to to be on the plane coming home <laughs> and, like, and knowing that that was the reason and no yeah because there's there's something I guess you can take pride like going out on your shield knowing that you gave it everything but to still have it in you, but like for doctors to pull you out and deck, no, it's not happening. It's like uh, out of your control. Yeah, like... and and also just such a rookie error. Like you mm. know, we talk about these like the not knowing. Like if that was the the one thing that cost yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the whole assignment was mm. because you decided you wanted to adjust your layer yeah, and yeah, took yeah. your glove off. Like people would just laugh at that and think, oh, one hundred percent. And it, it comes yeah. back to like the lack of experience uh. dealing with the cold and being in those environments and. Yeah there's always so much more prep you could do. Like always. in the lead up, I think we can get kind of complacent, like, oh, I'll be fine. I'll tough it out. You know, I have, I'll be sweet. But once you're out there, it's when you realize there's so many things I didn't even think of and I'm an idiot. <laughs> and like, I'm lucky that the puzzle kind of just fit together and I, I got it done. But mm. there's so many events. Like even when I was doing the bike ride, when my seat like broke, it was, I was so mad at myself because I had not done like the adequate training and had I have done that, I would have realized the design of the seat clamp was like dodge and I would have fixed it and never had that issue. And like, I'm just lucky that I could figure something out on the fly to make it work. But 
it really does come back to yourself in all of those scenarios. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And and the guy who won it, I'm pretty sure his time was three hours and 11 minutes. And, oh and my he's, goodness. He's like European. And I just, I, I sat there and kind of tried to break down how that was possible. And yeah. we talk about human potential. Yeah. And then I remember seeing him on the ice and there was just no, like, no self-preservation at all. And uh, w- one of the things I actually haven't talked about, which is probably worth worth mentioning, was on the ice cap, it, it's not like you're just running along this really like clean kind of sheet of ice. There's these massive crevasses that kind of sit off the path. And so the way that they've marked the track uh, for safety is they just put poles down. And so your job is to run from pole to pole to pole. And that's and like, yeah. that's the safest, um, yeah, the safest right. route. And so this this dude who, who won it, I remember watching him fly back and it kind of, you know, in, in retrospect, it makes me realize that when I was going past those crevasses and again, part of the just not knowing the environment, I was going like a snail's pace because I was genuinely freaking out about how, how heavy those like crevasse drops mm. are. Mm. And knowing that there's a level of slippage anyway, that to factor that slippage in and be so close to a crevasse, like it just was kind of one of those things. It's a no-brainer slow down. Yeah. 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 And, and the, uh, the other thing with the crevasses is like there's chunks of ice breaking off in them all the time. And when oh, they, yeah. when they yeah. hit the ground, like there's echoes and vibrations on the ice cap. Wow. So, I mean, there was parts of it that felt very much like a scene in Jurassic Park yeah. where there's like a, a T-Rex. Yeah. Like, what the hell? And so adding to the foreign kind of nature of it, just mm. survival instinct really like kicked in and just stayed stable. Um, and this guy, so this guy was just charging pole to pole. Like proper charging. And uh, like, obviously to, to go through, do the ice that quickly and to still be able to, to make the time because the rest of the, the track is, there's still a few climbs in it as well. But um, like I said, with that icy section mm-hmm. afterwards, like he really just must've been reckless and a very good runner. Yeah. But, it's, it's probably not until about, I'd say 15 Ks that you really get into your like comfortable running stride and the, mm. the course kind yeah, of allows you to run yeah. n- normally. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like, it's so impressive. You yeah, wonder yeah. what he runs a normal marathon at, like on road. It's like, that's exactly what I thought. And I want to know. Is that a far, on ice? Yeah. That's far. It's yeah. just totally different. Like, cause I'm thinking like, what happens if you get like some of the quickest marathon runners to go and do that race? It's definitely just totally different mm. because Massive. like you're saying, there's just more about like your actual environment and just analyzing That's your environment. Skill. Yeah. So Navigation and just like, and staying switched on. Yeah. Like, especially if it's someone who's going quick, they're pushing themselves to go as fast mm. as they possibly can. Staying switched on enough to be aware of your environment and whatnot. Yeah. It's like, much more like, I would translate it more to like ultra marathons mm. where it's a lot of trail running, navigating yeah. rocks, descents. Like you really need mm. to be aware, whereas road you can kind of just switch off and let the cadence <laughs> yeah. find rhythm in that. Yeah. The fact that you don't get to put the word ultra in front of yours because it was 42Ks is just so annoying. Like that is an ultra marathon in my book. Like that is like, yeah. That is yeah. It, was, it was interesting that, that whole like doing the two legs in the space of 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, I think that was kind of what I, I hadn't allowed for that because I just assumed it would be over 48, um, yeah. which again, another rookie error. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it makes you realize how unplanned and prepared I probably was, despite <laughs> having read everything and, yeah. you know. Did anyone die? Is it common for people to die? No, I don't think it's common to die. And I think that a lot of the reason is because the, um, the race is capped. Like, I, I don't think that they allow any more than 200 people in it. Oh, okay. Um, and then with the aid stations, mm. so kind of close together. Um, it, it's it's not as raw as it think as it feels. Like I know that having talked about the ice sheet and how cold it was, it still is very raw. But um, very it's it's it. it's such a well run event that yeah. I mm. would fully trust. Um, mm. You know that <clears throat> if anything did go pear shaped, they would they'd have the capability to. Wow. Yeah, well, it's good. I think it, it probably speaks to the safety, the fact that like you don't need to necessarily qualify to enter it. But then again, like you get the events where you do have to qualify and those mm. are the guys that are usually a bit more chaotic, a bit more yeah. twisted. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, all right, they're the ones <laughs> that are going to push themselves so much further. Mm. So that's yeah. insane. Do you, what do you plan? And like, do you plan on doing like just a normal marathon at any point? Or like- I, I, I was thinking about this the other day and I've almost come to the conclusion that it, like, not that I would be bored with it. That sounds way too heroic. Yeah. I, I really would like appreciate any kind of you know, yeah. hustle, but... The next thing that I kind of think is, well, 
it maybe leans more towards doing trails than, yeah. than road runs. And so yeah. like <clears throat> I, probably next year, I reckon I'll have a crack at a couple of ultras yeah. um, and just to kind of see what the comparison is. And then uh, I guess maybe one of the things that stands out is I'm not, I know some people are driven. It's probably one of the best things about running is you can, you can pick like your goals and what mm-hmm. you want to aspire to. So mm-hmm. for some people that's going sub three or, or like the, the boys that, you know, in, in your running and the the podcast that you've, yeah. that you've mm. had with the other other dudes, like they've all got like kind of targets. It's like this yeah. is what I want to hit. I, I just don't think I'm driven necessarily from a time perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, it, like I, I really like the idea of, you know, just running raw distances and yeah. like and seeing what places it can take you to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Location based. Yeah, yeah. Lo- locations. Like I was, I, I was reading this Lonely Planet adventure runs and there's like a, a marathon in Baghdad. And I was just like, wouldn't it be awesome to go to mm. Afghanistan and run a marathon? And I know that that's like, <laughs> a lot of people think that idea is stupid and like it, it genuinely is. But the fact that there's an event like that out yeah. there that exists, it provides you a possibilities to go, well, like if, if I'm not going to get the same kick out of going sub three in a marathon, mm. like what other running things are that you could go and mm. kind of tick off? Yeah, running is beautiful like that. It's very subjective. And it kind of allows, like you said, there's different goals and whatnot. It's not just a standard goal across everyone's board. And like, you could be a different, like depending on what your age, your capability, you may have issues. Like, you know, like everyone has sets their own goal. It's just that most people push themselves when they become like a runner. And it's like, that's just the best thing about it. Yeah. Is that everyone can like just go to that next level and constantly keep pushing it absolutely yeah and i think that that's that's like healthy to remember right when like when you hear people's running stories it's not about like their standard your yes. standard it's like that's that's amazing like I, I respect so much that you hustled and and went off and whether it's like you you ran 5k's for the first time mm. like that's a, an epic achievement 100 percent. whatever it is for you find your 100 and just strive towards that yeah. i think it, it is cool though that you have the mindset of wanting to be like a bit more location based a bit mm. more numbers and expe- more experience based i would call it because i think a lot of people here probably just given how we grew up like mm-hmm. going through school and stuff you would know it's all about like times swimming carnivals athletics carnivals it's all about like being faster faster mm. faster i think that gets imprinted in a lot of our minds like for you where do you think you adopted this mindset of no i want to be more experience based Maybe it's um, maybe it's built out of a not being able to or feel like I'm not f- fast enough to yeah. kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. to be in the conversation. So you're like, yeah. oh well, what else could I do that would would yeah. make it different? But I think that like I, I can't explain why going to Greenland stood out to me so much when I saw saw that video of running on ice, but it did. Mm. And and so instead of going, oh that's that's too hard or that's something that you could like talk about, it's like well. If, if it stands out to you, there's probably something in that that makes you, like, that needs to be explored. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of what, what led it there. But, you know, there's there's so many more, like, as I said, the adventure runs that you see. And you go, like, could I do that? And so, you know, if you when you see these races, like the 100 milers, and you've got to have qualifying times, it's like, well, I probably, like, if I'm not going to be able to qualify for that, it doesn't mean that you still couldn't go and, do that run mm-hmm. and so that, that, that's kind of the thing that I just go oh well if you've got options don't be limited by like the framework of or to run by these people or it's like mm-hmm. it's like go and try and run that like mm-hmm. you know get get a group like it's exactly the same with that uh, Palm Beach to Bondi um, yeah. the hike and I know mm-hmm. that, that, that Josh you guys yeah, you, you've done that the man, manly, manly, to, to manly to Bondi sorry yeah. and you know, you look on the website and it gives you an itinerary of how many days it will take and if you walk from here to here, mm. there's, there's the yeah. options. And then like, you can go crank that out in a day and then if you look and you go and see people have run that, they've done it in like, you know, under 10 hours type yeah. thing and you see that oh. kind of stuff and go, oh, like, why is there these limits like yeah. placed on things? Mm. Because it's like, uh, not, not the, the average person. It's just like, it's what's realistic. Mediocre. Mm. It's like changing what is realistic is, is very much up to the individual. Like it's mm. not, group decisions don't make like that realistic perspective. Mm. It's like only you can really say, I'm going to yeah. do that in this time and go and do it. I reckon mm. that's one of the cool things about running and mm. well, anything really, but it's you do have an opportunity that is different to the cookie cutter. Hundred mm, percent. It's adopting the mindset and surrounding yourself with people with that similar mindset. Because 
you are a product of your environment and being around, you know, like mediocre people that obtain that mindset and, and have the mindset of, you know, it's whatever they say, like they say to do it in 10 days. So we're going to do it in 10 days, yeah. but be around those people that are like, no, nah, I reckon we can do that in one. Mm. Yeah. Just dream, dare to be great and dream. And I think it, it comes with the mindset of being comfortable with failure and, and yeah. seeing failure for what it is like lessons learned. That's how we see it. Um, like I'm, I'm happy to try something and fail and, and learn from it and go again. And sometimes you'll go a bit too far and get a bit too close to the edge. Sometimes, you know, you'll fall short, but that's all right. And mm-hmm. I think, I think it's just a much more satisfying way to live yeah. because I don't know, you just, you learn so much more about yourself mm-hmm. and you see the world in a different way when you push yourself. Like Definitely. That. What did the training look like for you? And like, I guess that comes down to like, when did it start? What were you actually doing? in terms of physical training, and then I guess we can talk nutrition too. Yeah, so I guess I, I didn't really run as much as I would have liked. I know that that's kind of, uh, it's almost it's like a, 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 a <laughs> no, generic no. statement that yeah. anyone anyone would say, but um, I, I really didn't run nearly as much. It was kind of, it was probably three three runs a week, and I'd kind of do two shorter ones, like maybe like 10, 12 Ks, and then I would pop in a long one. Um, the thing for me was like, I had this mentality that I wanted to just be able to like crack out a half marathon like instantly if I needed to because mm-hmm. that would give me the the mental understanding that like oh particularly in the way that I'd viewed the the thing it was like I thought I was running the marathon first so if I was in like a world mm-hmm. of pain after the marathon you could crack out the half and I knew that I could just people. mentally go well you could you could do that like yeah. you won't be fast it won't be an amazing mm-hmm. run but you'll, you'll get, get it done, done. and so mm-hmm. So that was kind of a, a mixture, like not that much running, a long run a week and two kind of shorter ones, but I needed to be able to pull a, <clears throat> a half marathon like on a dime. If, <laughs> but for me to think that I would I would be able to actually go ahead and, and yeah. fulfill it. Yeah. And look, nutrition, like just not much happened. The only thing I did have was um, there's a mate of mine who is, I would, you know, class a very, a very good long distance runner. And, um, and he sort of helped me with my race plan and said, look, definitely when you get up in the morning like make sure you take a dump um mm. like get get like tons of carbs in but he was he was very much like wake up two hours early from when they tell you like to be on the bus like mm-hmm. don't worry about what how much sleep you can get yeah, like yeah. even though you know sleep, sleep is, is very fun. very good factor yeah. Yeah. he was like you need to make sure before the race like that your stomach's good that you've got the right amount of fluid in um, you know, he said to to take some tailwinds, like yeah. like just that kind of stuff. And so, he helped he helped me know the, you know, running for beginners kind of novice mm. one hundred and one tips that um mm. that that probably helped me get through it. But as far as the preparation, like, it, it was not good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the with the one long run, what was yep. the longest run you did? Um, it's, there was twenty like the the halves were there. I think I might have done a twenty four one day as well but yeah like i know that when you train like you're not supposed even in when you do the marathon plans like you i think the most you're supposed to run they say it's just over like 30 yeah They're just yeah. like the other one that's that's like the best prep run you can do it's weird i find mentally for me though anytime i'm prepping for something i always want to do the distances yeah. before mm. the actual event so i know i can do yeah, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is like yeah which i don't know what easy. contradicts what like how professionals train but mm. mentally, it does so much for me, knowing, right, I can swim this far, I can run, I can cycle this far. Yeah. Yeah, I think with, like, yeah, with the long run, it's it's hard because, yeah, how far do you go and, like, what do you take from the long run? It's like, because for me, like, leading up to the last mara, longest I ran was, like, 30 yep. before it. And that was, like, that was, like, super, I was super confident from that. But then in the mara, those last 12Ks were the hardest. So it's like, do you just run 40? Like, do you know, like the next time, do I run 40 and then get a good time and just be like, I know that I can run 40 at a certain like time. And it's like, it's so, it's hard. Yeah, because that's right. Like you, you think about training, it's like replicating what the challenge mm-hmm. is, is going to be. And then by running like 30, it's almost like you're shirking the challenge because mm-hmm. you know that like on game day, like yeah. that extra 12Ks is not going to be free. Yeah. 
No, like yeah, that's yeah. when you, when you're going to be hurting the paying in full. Yeah, that's where you clock on. Yeah. Is that last ten? Like yeah. is it twelve? Yeah, that's that's super interesting. Mm. Um, yeah. So what were your short runs more like? Were you, were you trying to run them quicker, or were you just going out and just getting a run in? Some sometimes, but I, I very much like just run on feel. Like if yeah. I if I leave the house and I'm like the first K feels like it's it's pretty easy and it's it's quick. I'll be like, oh okay, like okay. I'll push myself here. But if I'm if I'm sluggish, I'm like, oh, I've just got to finish the distance. Mm. Like and that's which is important because yeah, I think that I like that's it. smart training versus, mm. you know, and I think there's a danger in also setting an expectation of kilometers per week yeah. because you can set that and then, you know, you have a little niggle in your knee, but you're like, no, I said I was doing 50 Ks a week before this, so I need to get it done. You go out and push yourself, you get injured. Whereas, um, you know, Courtney DeWalter? Yep. Yeah, so I was listening to her on, on Rogan's podcast and he was asking about her training and stuff and she was purely just like, oh, I don't know, I just run what I want to, like I run how far I want to, I just purely do it off mm -hmm. how I feel on the day. I don't set an expectation for myself, I just go and then when I want to stop, I stop. Wow. And he was like, Joe is just like, what? Like you're one of the best ultra runners ever mm -hmm. and that's how you train. And I, I think there's there's credit to that, it makes sense. It mm. makes sense. It does because if you, it's also going to push your mental too because you have the opportunity to stop when you... Because, yeah, like, and you were speaking to that. It's like setting those expectations is kind of dangerous. Because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you know, I should be running only 10K today. But what happens if you get to the 10, you're like, I feel great. It's like, why wouldn't you run 15 on that day and then do less on another day? It also, like, speaks to how we are, like, is in, in society. Like, we're, we're such consumers. Like, we want, we want the, you know, the keys to success. We mm -hmm. want, like, a quick fire tip. Yeah. So, like, Courtney DeWalter's, like, running plan, everyone's like, oh, it must be this like elite document yeah. that fully yeah. outlines like if I run eight Ks this day, seven like I'm gonna you know be able to get to the top. With seven different consultants. Like, yeah. Consulting That's, the design, yeah. yeah. And, On a treadmill scientist yeah. Yeah. boards hooked up. And and then you hear that and we're so shocked by it. But actually it, it almost seems like the rawest plan. Like she's good because she loves doing it for X amount of time and she like you know, when she feels good she like really taps into that. Mm -hmm. And so there's probably a joy in her being able to train that like fluidly. Yeah, 100%. That isn't there in a in a structured like. Yeah, definitely. And she probably uses like all that joy that she gets from that. She probably pulls on that in those deep dark moments. Yeah. It's like she knows that this is where she's supposed to be. She's happy yeah. being in the suck because she chooses to be almost. I yeah. think the only danger with that mentality and obviously she's got it dialed in is like running when you like stopping when you want to stop a lot of people stop way too early yes yeah. and that's where you need to have discipline and not listen to that like the as our uh, joe calls it the inner bitch yeah. don't listen to that you got to know where that line is mm. because it is it can be very dangerous it's so important to be able to like have that discipline and i think it's it's the little things we do each day that build the discipline not not the big feet yeah, i reckon and also that's uh, like you said the the little things it's like what are your little things because they also might be really different. Like, you know, when we're talking about the ice baths, mm. it's like what you think is your standard is, is going to be probably shaped by what other people's standards are as well. But if you know that your record was this, like how... How, how safe are you in sticking to, to your standards? Because you need to grow. So they need to change at some part. But mm. what, are those, what are those little things that you're actually incrementally mm. adding in? Yeah. Yeah, because it does become the new baseline. Like going for the ice bath every day, it gets a little bit easier, a little bit more comfortable. And it varies because there will be days where it's like, man, I really do not want to do it today. But I think it's it's changing times, it's changing, you know, doing it with people is so much easier. I found doing it by myself is a lot harder. And the way Kyle and I kind of look at it is we're almost training for winter. Yeah. Like if right now it's summer ice baths, you do it, you get out, it's nice and warm, you go stand in the sun, you warm up. But like we're training for the cold winter mornings where it's, 10 degrees we get out we go in the zero degree ice bath get out and it's still freezing cold yeah so i think it's it's just constantly as you said constantly changing constantly adding a bit more discomfort to your plate each mm -hmm. and every time and then when it gets comfortable add another piece of discomfort yeah. mm -hmm. and keep going Super do you think because you, you started cycling a bit hey oh i got a bike i wouldn't say that i started okay, cycling yeah. <laughs> but it's it's on the agenda yeah is <laughs> in you want to start looking into triathlons or just maybe some cycle events I, look i could see a world where where that happens down the track but i'm like for now i think that my initial goal like i'm i'm very much like pick a hobby 
Mm. It's, it's almost like a, these fad diets of just like, oh, I'm going to go do that now. <laughs> um, and, and I feel like that's very much the next thing. Like I'll run an ultra. But, you know, like what I do love about the idea of, of having a bike and cycling is it's just variety. Like you can mm. put that into your into training and enjoy something different. Mm. Um, and so uh, like, I can, you know, down the track, maybe do some, do some riding, do some triathlon stuff. Um, but not, not in the short term future, I'd say it's, um, it's not on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Have you got a, an ultra in mind that you think you want to do? Yeah. There's one, um, in Brisbane called, uh, the Guzzler. And, uh, I think it's a Guzzler. It sounds like it's, yeah. <laughs> like it's tough. Yeah. yeah. And, and it runs, um, it's these trails through the, um, like, I think you call it like the Brisbane hinterland and there's like uh, reservoirs of, of water. And I think you run kind of around maybe five of them or, or something. So that, that's the whole course. So. I think I think that actually does go up to a maybe a hundred k race. Um, I I'd probably think I'd I'd more go at the um like the lower ones, maybe like a kind of fifty or mm-hmm. sixty to begin, and then um you know see see how that goes. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I think that's the the best part. It's like what's the next thing, mm-hmm. and then if you fail the next thing, like that becomes your goal that you've still got to yeah. go yeah, back at yeah. to complete that before you level up. Mm-hmm. Um, 100%. So, so that, I think that's the, the main thing for me is I don't want to jump too high and be like, oh, I'm going to be a hero now and go mm-hmm. go run 100 and see if I can do that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's what's the next incremental step that's Definitely. like realistic? Yeah. Mm. Do you think there's... Not, not... What's my wording here? Do you think it's easier to motivate yourself to train and prepare when it's a bigger event in terms of like you flew to Greenland, there's cost of flights, there's taking time off work, like all of this stuff versus if you were to just do like the Sydney Marathon on a Saturday where you don't need to take any time off. I've thought about this a lot. That destination idea is huge for me because I was thinking that at at copious amounts of times like throughout the race of, oh, like if I was to pull the pin here and get picked up on the bus and just get, you know, an evac back to back to base camp like that would be one of the most unfulfilling things going you've thought about this for so long like mm-hmm. you've had this idea in your head for, for ages you've gone out you've bought the gear like you ran past the glacier like you probably hadn't seen a glacier before like all, all that kind of stuff and so it was like it was 26 hours flying time like to greenland that's not without the layovers oh like it, it's, it's a long way away and so if that had been, you know, I drove to the central coast, like, yeah. I don't know if oh, I drove an hour to get here, it kind of sits at the same level of like, uh, of um, not guilt, but like, I don't know if it resonates as much to go, yeah. you made all these sacrifices, so you're just going to finish it. Mm. And I reckon that really helped me yeah. um, just mentally justify it to myself. Mm. Um, maybe that could be one of the reasons why the idea of a destination yeah. thing appeals to me. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Mm. I think it's just such a cool thing. Like I keep coming back to imagine getting to the end of your life and being able to say, and just know that you ran all over the world. Like you yeah. Yeah. run through insane forests, you mm. run through snow, sand, deserts, like just, it'd be so cool. Yeah. And, and I think that's the best part too, is like you remember the race, like the races or the things you do because of like the, the challenges that pop up for you. Mm-hmm. People can ask you about it and you can, you can talk about it, but when you're in the thick of it, how you've like negotiated that, you know, that thought mm-hmm. or like, you know, you, that temperature where you kind of like, I just, I'm, I'm going to explode here, but you're like, no, nah, I've got five Ks before safety or whatever it is. Like they're the things that stand out to you. And mm. when you talk about it, it doesn't have the same gist, but when you're in it and have to overcome it, that will be the thing that you can hold on to. Mm. So it's like, oh, I ran here, but I remember that this was the part of that race that hurt me the most, mm. yeah. or this was the part that really tested me. Mm. Yeah. And and that's cool, because the, only the runner gets that. Yeah, yeah. Off, off the back of that, how has it been for you coming back and trying to describe what you experienced to friends and family? It was, it was really interesting, because you want to find the balance of like, of not sensationalizing like of how it was because like as i said i use the example of it was hard for me like it was hard for me because i wasn't used to the environment mm. and so i could probably tell that to some swiss dude who's a cross-country skier and he'd be like well, yeah that's yeah, that's that's yeah. a bit soft and, I, <laughs> yeah. and i'd be so happy to hear that because <laughs> like that is his reality right mm-hmm. but but for me to be dropped in that context it was it was a different world so like 
when I explain it, you know, I explain it as this kind of, you know, strange, like Australian kangaroo, like this, you know, <laughs> this like native animal to people. It's like, oh, it's a land far away type thing almost. Yeah. And that's, uh, that wouldn't be everyone's experience. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to kind of <laughs> capture things that I, I struggled with and some people might think, oh, it's good. Some people might think, meh. Yeah, you, you're probably blowing that out of proportion, but that was that was definitely how how I yeah. felt it, and and I just I'll never forget that that cold when I stepped off the bus, just that initial reaction of going this is this is not right, yeah. like I would like to go back now, wow. um, and and the fact that I had to overcome that part. Mm. Yeah. And and also the weirdness of like you put yourself in that situation. Yeah, you chose yeah. to be yeah. there. Yeah. So it's like a conflict in your head, and no one else around you's quitting. Yeah. They're, all, they're all doing it yeah that, although there was a couple of busloads that came past because when the half marathon finished and people decided to throw in the towel no way I, I actually gained a lot of confidence from that oh that would fuel you so much seeing people drive past who had pulled out because yeah. you sit there and go oh I'm still, I'm still here and you yeah. in those moments whatever you need to tell yourself yeah. to keep going you tell yourself okay, so. and like from the outside people might think it's egotistical but you just you tell yourself like I'm better than them. Look at them. They're yeah, quitting. Them, they quit. I, I'm a savage. I'm yeah. a savage. I'm the best. <laughs> well, and, and then the other thing as well is like, you don't want to go, oh, you don't want to just openly share it. Like I was really kind of hesitant at, at how much I talked about it before because I thought if I go over there, don't finish it yeah, and yeah, come yeah. back, everyone's like, oh, how was that Greenland run? Oh yeah, like I, I did my best. Like, <laughs> it, it, it just, it doesn't have that, that kind of thing, right? But, yeah. but I knew for me that was, that was what I wanted to do in that, in that chunk of time off. So it didn't really matter about how it was received. Yeah. But, but mentally, yeah. I was like, I have to finish for, for you 100%. Yeah, and that's yeah. the most important. And I think doing that, like after you've done that comeback, does it make the day to day easier, the day to day struggles, purely because you, it was such a, a raw experience that was so close to you? Do you know, one of the things that, uh, like, I don't know if this answers the question, but the thing that I actually, like, brought back from it was I was just so appreciative, like, to actually be able to run there, like, to go to a place like that and think, well, like, I'm so fortunate to, to live in this part of the world and to be able to have the option to go and choose to struggle in a different environment with, like, a pretty, you know, safe, well, like, set up run and, and challenge. Like, and that to me was kind of, like, it was, it was more a sense of gratitude of, as opposed to, oh, it was so tough, like I overcame it. Like it, it was, and yeah. it was awesome. But like I went there with the goal, kind of knew I would finish it, even if it, you know, like <laughs> had some level of yeah. like, of cost and, and, and hurt. But this, the option of being able to have that on the table was kind of the thing that mm -hmm. just gave me a very um, yeah. like renewed perspective. Mm. One thing that like really has I found super impressive from here, like knowing your story about it, is just the fact that um you were there by yourself. Right. That is like, that is a big, that is a big, like for me, like I've, like all my runs and stuff like that, like my partner's like been there or I've had like friends like with me or I've been doing it, I've actually been doing the race with someone. So it's like, and that's what I, I take a lot out of it with that because like you're building together, you know what I mean? Like you're doing it with friends, you're, becoming a better human being like with other people around you it's a great feeling but for you like i admire so much that you went there by yourself like that is that's very impressive to me it's, it was on that one of the hikes that i was, I was talking about yeah. with um with a group of, of people it was actually that moment that i realized i wanted to do something like that like by, by myself yeah, as opposed to with people because mm. i felt like i was becoming super dependent mm. on people in the group to like to pick me up mm -hmm. and there's like some very good characters on, on those hikes and, and, and that was kind of the thing that I thought like what about going into a situation where you don't have that as a support and seeing how you go because that's yeah. a that's a different tier and, and, mm. and I really love that and maybe that's the part that kind of you do come away with a little bit more confidence or mm -hmm. inspired about oh I can I can manage okay. those like situations but um, yeah it's, it's a super unique experience when you don't have like any anyone. anyone like that and also um there's there's people on the run who you get to know throughout the time yeah. but uh, i felt like a lot of people didn't run like with someone like once the race kind of started and it, it separated like you didn't have that support anyway so it was it was super unique to to be isolated 
by yourself. But I was I really expected to be kind of surprised by like captivated by nature and stuff and thought that oh, I'd, I'd all of a sudden realize I'm at the 30k mark but you get you get really deep like in your own head and and there's so much thinking that even though you are taking it in like it, it wasn't as prominent as like it wasn't on the top tier of your priority list yeah, like you were just deep sense. in thought probably the lack of like again I haven't you have just seen the photos you've sent but it's probably the lack of stimulus like there's not these beautiful colors you beautiful, like there's one color and it's it's just all kind of the same for so mm-hmm. long so i imagine that kind of desensitizes you and destimulates you and as you're struggling and you're in so much pain and you're also as you said you're in that just survival state of this is so dangerous like i yeah. could die in these elements i need to survive and get this done that you just it all goes internal and you really do sit in your head because that is as much as you're battling the elements, like the, the bigger battles on the mind, because you know you're capable of doing it, mm. but it's just getting over that hump of like, I can do it, I can do it. Yeah. yeah. The constant reminder, just like, dude, uh, I can imagine so many times people doing like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, <laughs> what am I doing here? Just like, dripping sweat, cold, hot, like all those different feelings. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wonder what it would be like for, you know how you're talking about with the experiences, like how your experience was very unique to you. I wonder what it would be like for someone like the Swiss guy you're talking about as in that type of person who is used to that like minus 20 degrees. I wonder if they came here and ran a marathon in like 30 degrees. I wonder if they'd have a similar sort of revelation to you in terms of they get off the bus or they get out of the car and they're like, oh my God, it's so hot. Yeah. Like, I wonder if they would have the same thing or, like, cold is just, like, inherently worse. Yeah. Th- that would be fascinating to see. Like, how how did the, the, the 311 Swiss runner go in the outback? If you drop him off yes. and say, run this marathon, like, what sort of time would would he yeah. he, he, he deliver? And, like, yeah. and exactly that. I wouldn't even care about the time to be asking him. Like, yeah. h- how did you experience that? Like, mm. is, is that temperature so out of your wheelhouse that you know you couldn't finish or uh-huh. you were so challenged by it that you just were like no nah, this is this is silly or yeah. would he even hear about that and just go i'm not doing it mm. yeah I yeah yeah it's, it's would he actually yeah which again like you say we're fixated on time and whatnot like mm. that but putting yourself in those different arenas like you're saying where the elements are against you in a different way or it's just yeah. a whole new experience mm. and like it comes back down to yeah going by yourself all the travel time you took like maybe someone's not actually willing to do that, but they can run a three-hour marathon. Yeah. So it's like there's a different level of suck. You know, it's a, it's yeah. a different mental grind. Um, is there anyone that like you'd look to or is there anyone that sort of inspired you, I guess? Like it could be someone you know or like another runner or an endurance person. Like, Look, I feel like you can always say with like the generics, like the Ugolgans, your Brockmans, like those, mm. what what they do, like your Cam Haynes, it's, it's so consistent. And I think that's the mm. thing that, everyone resonates with how you can get up and do that over and over and over again i'll always be in awe of that mm-hmm. um the my mate pd who i was talking about is a, a good runner is i feel like for him i kind of you know remember like years ago when he didn't have this like insane base level of cardio or wasn't necessarily what you would call a runner mm-hmm. and i just i look at how much he's kind of studied like the art of running and how much like research he's done to like fix his technique to sort out his nutrition and now just goes and does these like baller like 12 hour races and things like wow. that mm-hmm. and and just yeah. and just loves it like and that's the type of stuff that i just go i've, I've watched that progression mm-hmm. and so it's really easy to get fixated on like the heroes of like you know in, in the world scheme but it's like what what's like your local hero look like and i reckon he's just been that's great because you've been able to follow his journey yeah, which is yeah. way more impressive we always want to know more about the journey but you've actually seen it unfold in your eyes and people get too stuck in the comparison loop where they see the goggins as of the world the ned brockmans and they just look at the feet that they've done and they're like i could never do that that's yeah. so far away but they don't see the work that's gone in as cam talks about in his book like you don't see when he was first running five kilometer runs and that was his max. Like you don't mm. see those days. You just see him putting in a marathon a day and it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I could never do that. He's, yeah. he's an anomaly. Yeah. But I think it's so important and for you to have a friend that you can see that in is just, mm-hmm. it must be so just uplifting in the fact that you're like, oh, I could do that too. 
because he he was once doing you know what I was. Like we have similar circumstances. Like mm. we're friends. You know what I mean. Was we you? do a lot of similar shit. Yeah. Was he also? Was he the guy that did like twenty four hours around the lake or something? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, that's the twelve hours. Then the, uh, the narrow bean all nighter that, that he did. And so the I think he ran up. Sounds so hard. I, I, I think he did like 108 k's, maybe 110 k's in, in in 12 hours. No, Starts at no. 6 p.m. and goes to 6 a.m. What the fuck? Yeah. That's insane. And and so again, like that, just things like that, you know, going and and running like with like the the Greenland environment and seeing this like insane scenery. Like you don't go past the same thing twice, right? Mm. And that's a different challenge. Like to just be able to get yourself in that head and just see the same thing over and over and over again and watching like you know the sun go down and and and, and that's like a different struggle entirely and so like that is a race that would never appeal to me i I just (laughs) sit there and go i would just i don't want to do it and it's not that like the struggle of it would be great but i would also be like bored to death kind of in the way that if i'm gonna spend 12 hours running i'd rather spend 12 hours running overseas in Uh, a new environment totally and so that's like oh is it is it a like a isn't it an attractive thing or is it actually a, a detractor is that a crutch that i'm kind of leaning on mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to make running viable for me like yeah. it's it's interesting yeah. it is because it it could be like am i just am i just bitching out and is mm-hmm. it this is just something that's really uncomfortable for me to think yeah. about doing or is it no, no i just genuinely that has no appeal i do struggle with that too like yeah. finding the like yeah am i actually just a, am i just a bitch <laughs> or is it something that i don't want to do like is it something because we don't have to do everything you know what i mean we're never going to be able to do everything 100 percent, and not all of it's going to appeal to us which comes back to like as you said it's so subjective and i think mm-hmm. it's so great that it is because you can find the things you enjoy and mm-hmm. anyone that you know does the narrow bean all nighter some part of them wants to do it yeah. otherwise mm-hmm. they wouldn't do it like yeah. Even if they say, I don't want to do it. Well, you kind of do because you're doing it. Yeah. Like some little part of you has a desire to do that. And I think it's finding wherever that desire is and following that yeah. no matter what anyone tells you. It's almost like a little bit of desire mixed with like real hard work. Mm. Like you can't just have the hard work 100%. for no purpose. And that's where the satisfaction is going to be so much greater. Like when you finished, how good did you feel? Oh, it's actually, uh, to be very honest with you, I kind of got emotional because yeah. as as I was coming down the hill, when I realized I saw the 41K sign, and it's like, if I fell over, I could probably roll the rest of the way. Like, yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was the first time I fully accepted that I'd finished it. Yeah, I think wow. in the build-up, like, there was parts where I just thought, oh, I, I don't know if this is going to happen. And um, the finish at the airport, when you've got, like, kind of eight Ks to go, looks like it's just there. But mm. you actually end up having to climb this hill and go out before you come back to the oh. airport. And so that's just like, you know, you talk about that final 12 Ks. Yeah. It's like they made that part like a, a real challenge. And so mm. I kind of kind of got salty and just kept doing it and then got to that point and was like, oh, I've done it now. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, the feeling was amazing. And what, what was funny is the day before, there was heaps of people out in the street like cheering for you because... Kangaloos, the town only has like 500 uh, population, wow. and and you land there, which I've I found out the capital of Greenland is actually Nuuk, and you've got to catch a light plane there because the weather is the most stable in Kangaloos, which is why they've got the international airport there. Mm. But it's a nothing like yeah, kind of town, yeah. <laughs> and and so with like 500 people in the town, like you know when when the marathon's there, they've got something to come out and see. Yeah, see yeah. So. When I came down the hill, I was expecting this kind of like, you know, the street line and people yeah. out and it's just kind of empty because it's, <laughs> it's so cold. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that was that was kind of a, a, an interesting uh, thing yeah. to experience as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was the best feeling. And it was just uh, like, I know some people talk about this, um, this idea of, oh, like what's next? Or I've lost a, a bit of purpose because I finished that goal. Mm. It's like that was there for so long, like for me as like a thought thing. And when I got inside at the um, the Polar Lodge, which is where the, where the race finishes, I just sat down and for like 10 minutes, I didn't really want to talk to anybody. Like yeah. it, I just, I literally sat in a corner and just, I just had to like kind of digest like, oh, I'm okay. Like yeah. I've survived, like check that everything yeah. was kind of like still, yeah, <laughs> still there type thing. Yeah. And then it was just the case of digesting going, oh, like that goal that just always kind of sat there yeah, is, is now done. And that was such a good feeling to to have realized that I didn't have any of these like 
what's my cover story if I don't finish or yeah. like, yeah. Or, or how do I deal with the like, the, the, the disappointment or like resentment towards myself if I'd failed, right? Yeah. And then to go, nah, like it's, it's completed. Like it was, it was cool. I actually mm. did it. Yeah, because you were worried about so much. Like, what am yeah. if I don't? No, you did it. You're like, holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. And and also like I'm I'm super intrinsically motivated. I don't really care for like medals and trophies and all mm-hmm. that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And and like to get the, the medals I was kind of the first time that I looked at them and thought, Oh, like this is really good to have these like for me to be able to see, like just as that reminder. Now oh, like that. Yeah, like I always have it in my head and that's definitely more valuable. But to be able to see like the the medals and like the the fact that they're you know it was it was in Greenland like it's yeah. it's a story that's kind of hundred percent I think it it clearly speaks to the difficulty of what you did for yourself in terms of I think we can do a lot of hard things and when you finish you don't get that massive sense of satisfaction I think it's purely because it's not hard enough for you you got to find something that's really difficult and when you finish and you do have that really great sense of satisfaction. I think that is like a, a telltale of, right, you really did push yourself yeah. and like props to you because like mm-hmm. you're, you're pushing the limits. Yeah. And, and what I find is like so absurd about running is by nature, it's like the easiest thing. It's like just put one foot in front of the other. Mm-hmm. It's like just keep doing that. Like that's all you have and to do. It's like, yeah. And it's such a simple task, but how scalable it is. It fully depends on the environment, like mm-hmm. the distance you're going, like what other adversities are going on that make that putting the next foot in front of the other so much harder than like any other thing that you could do. Definitely. And, uh, that yeah. is the most beautiful part of running. Mm. It is just so simple. Yeah. I love it. There's no equipment, just shoes. You don't even need shoes. You can run on bare feet. Like yeah. it's just like, it is so simple and you can do it wherever you are. Mm. Like it's just about this. Yeah, hundred percent. And it is the, there really is the tier where I think you could probably get away with most marathons like a lot of people will get away with not necessarily being on top of like nutrition and water. But I think once you enter that ultra category, that's when it becomes about intelligence. That's when it becomes about really understanding your body, nutrition, hydration, just like a cognitive awareness, navigation, whatever it is. I think that's where the level up really comes in and Mm -hmm. it stops being this just, you know, one foot in front of another to like, no, there's, there's strategy to this, there's game Mm -hmm. plan. Um, I'm listening to Goggin's new book at the moment. And he's talking about like his ultra experiences and how like, which I didn't even know, but they have paces and ultras and you have your own crew and he has his paces that do different legs with him. And it's like, never even knew that was a thing. Yeah. But, Wait, so he has like, like four different guys on his crew. Yeah. Multiple different people oh, on his shit. crew that are paces that will come yeah. in and run a leg with him. Damn. Yeah. So not as the event. Just no, not as the event. It's, you have to have your own paces. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So there's really... I think once you get into that tier, it's like, okay, now it becomes about intelligence. Yeah. Mm. And like, you need to have the physical baseline, but you've got to be smart with it. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. Like, you're not going to go on a, a long drive in your car without going and like, you know, putting air in the tires, like putting yeah. petrol, like oil, all that kind of stuff. And so you can't expect to just go to that extra tier yeah. of distance and not yeah. have that prep. Like, it's a very good yeah. analogy. When's the when's the next one you wanted to do again? You said I think it's May. I think it's May next year. So it's okay. it's a while off. We've got six months of time to get ready for it and make uh-huh. sure that like. Have you booked it? Ready? No, not yet. Okay. That's the Brisbane yeah. one. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Are you set on doing that, or you'll just sort of gauge? Yeah, it's one of those things. Like I've once I get the idea in my head, like it's it's kind of there. So I saw it, and you know that's uh, for the foreseeable future. It's like pick that, get that done, and then we'll we'll see what the next thing yeah. is. That's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird. Sometimes it just sort of picks itself, and then other times she's like you're, you're searching. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you don't know what it is till you see it. Mm. It's cool as well when a friend sort of springs it upon you, and yeah. they're just like, "Hey, I want to do this." It's yeah. like. Yep, sure. Yeah, Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, what do you do? You want to walk 100k's? Yeah. Definitely. Really? Where I don't. This might be a bit soon for you. I don't know. But on the 21st of January, it's a Saturday. <laughs> the day before I start my new job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we're doing. Yeah, so on the 20th at 10 p.m. we're starting, yeah. and then yep. we're walking 100 kilometers until we finish. Because yeah. we were gonna do. Because we did the Bond out of Manly. Um, and then we want to do 100 because that was 80. So we're gonna walk from Brooklyn Wharf to like CBD and a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Mm. From, oh man, that sounds yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah, we have a, we have a, funnily enough, we have a mate who um is doing a 100K trail run. 
he signed up the UTA, yeah. the Blue yeah, Mountains yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. He was one. listening to Goggins' audiobook. It's 11 o'clock at night, this certain track. <laughs> and he, he's just laying there and he's like, I have to book it. Just goes straight away on his phone, books it. Books just it. down the rabbit hole. Yeah, That's all like, like, how good. Be... Like, yeah. Hasn't done a trail run before. Furthest he's run is 42. Never, never done a trail run. And he's just going to try and punch out 100. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. It yeah. is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so keen to see it. Like, it's, it's, it's like that's that stuff, right? Like, you can you can always be convinced of like, oh, this thing, like, come on, mate, like, big up. But like, to actually go, I'm going to take the step mm, and, yeah. and book it and know that like... That means yeah, I'm doing yeah. it. Like, proper respect, eh? Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be nuts. Yeah. Um, is there anything like you want to talk about in terms of your race or anything else? Like, no, I was, I, I was actually going to say like I really, I, I really enjoy um, like what you guys are doing with the podcast and the way that you've kind of tapped into this thing. Like, like what we're talking about with the um, the the heroes. Like everyone's got like the the kind of mm-hmm. natural heroes, but or like the big ones that have yeah. got way more notoriety. And I think what is is so cool about uh, what you guys do is it's you're capturing people that maybe aren't at that level. It's like, at what point of the journey? Like, you, you never know what these people will be like mm, in, in like five, 10 years. Yeah. And like, and to be fair, like some of them already do are, are on like pretty, you know, credentialed mm. path. But it's, it, that's like the, the was, I think we maybe make the mistake of jumping too far and only wanting to capture people who are kind of of this yeah yeah have the accolade it's like and and like what actually makes their stories is the building block stuff it's like the stuff now so when you're like when you're accessing it at like this point and and being able to like to share those things with people i reckon that's like so much more of what a lot of people genuinely need to hear and see Mm -hmm. as opposed to this end game stuff and i think that's that's really cool yeah yeah and like I think more nowadays that's starting to happen, but it is difficult because we just all want to see the best of the best. Yeah. So it's like just the way that like everything tears sort of waters down. It's like everyone wants to see. So we desire, one. like you only see on the podium one, two, and three, you don't see the rest yeah. of the field. Who probably lost by, say it's swimming, right? It's like yeah. maybe if you're fourth, you lost by, you know, half a second. So yeah. you've put in all the work that like one, two, and three have, yeah. but like no one knows who you are. Yeah. Like, isn't that just a crazy thing? I feel there's so many of us who don't put in the work that number four put in yeah. that it's so important to put number four out there. And just weekend, give give them a, a spotlight. And I think that's the coolest thing as well is everyone has a story. Everyone's worthy of coming on the podcast because, mm-hmm. like, everyone's interesting. Mm-hmm. And anyone is capable of being on the podium. Yes. Anyone is. Yeah. It's actually has triggered one one more thing that I that I should share is uh, one of the guys who I did meet over there was um, he's from Luxembourg and yeah. um, the the race timings are pretty generous like I think you got four hours to finish the half and um, you got seven hours before they will pull you out of the the full yeah. Yeah. and uh, that's a guy who's uh, from Luxembourg uh, Bernie and he did something to his calf he's a pretty decent runner actually mm. he did it, uh, I think it must have been about the twelve kilometer mark. And um, I was expecting him to be kind of well ahead of me and I didn't see him like the whole race. And um, I think he finished with like 90 seconds left. Oh my gosh. um, Because after he like did something to his calf, he just kind of struggled like the whole way and like kind of walked, limped um, to get it done and and was out there for like the entire duration to finish. And exactly what you like, what you're talking about there. It's like, everyone's got a story. Like he went there and it's like, he would have probably been, you know, filthy if someone said, like, you, it's going to take you just shy of seven hours to yeah, finish yeah. that. He'd be like, it's no, not going to happen. Yeah. But that was what happened, like, for his race and for him to finish it and that to is. just go, look, I only keep, like, persisting here, knowing that there's a very good possibility that I'm going to miss the deadline and be... And be- this speaks to your time thing you were talking about. It's like that to me is so much more impressive than a time. 100%. The fact that he got faced with adversity, shit got thrown in his face that he would never expect. It's arguably it harder. It's arguably harder. that yeah. is harder than running the best race and coming first. Like you don't learn anything in it because if everything goes to plan, then you're happy. It's breezy. It's cruisy. Yeah. So when the adversity hits and you push through it, yeah. that's yeah. when it's like, damn. Yeah. yeah. That's the end. Seven hours. And I'm at, like, you, you can speak to it. What would it have been like? How much harder would it have been for you to be out there for seven hours? It's, it was one of those things that, as I said, I got deflated when I knew that the time was blowing out early. Mm. And then I came to terms with it. But I think that the challenge with that was 
he would have expected to have been finished like way earlier and then realizing like not only am I going to be here a long time, I'm probably going to be in pain, like a mm. significant yeah. amount of pain, but am I going to like, am I going to persevere through that and be happy that I finished and, and go through like a, a probably much harder race mm. to get it done? Or do I risk doing that and then get pulled out anyway? Like yeah. the, the consequences or like the risk versus reward at that point yeah. was massive. And I just, I, I rate so much that that was like, that was what he chose. Mm. And mm it's such a different story but it wasn't one of just oh well like you know i've come this far and it's like that and, and he could have chosen that and no one would have thought differently he'd be 100%. like fair enough like mm, yeah your calf blew out yeah. yeah good yeah and so just like yeah exactly that that thing it's it's capturing like what what people's stories are, are so different to how sometimes we want them to be like mm -hmm. what's the end game oh like ned brock run 100 k's a, a day it's elite. Everyone resonates with that because it's such a good, good mm. goal. But like, I know the things that we rate more about was like that day thirteen or whatever when he yeah got taken off for his scan, then taken back mm -hmm. to the start, and like went kind of <laughs> yeah, MIA, MIA yeah. and and still persisted. Like that's what everyone cares about. Yeah, like, 100%. those are the times you remember definitely. Showing up, it's being willing to show up and just not stop. Like uh, the, the thing that still cracks me up about the whole thing is like it was Ned's record run and the whole thing was to be the first person and like he didn't achieve that goal mm. Mm. and no one cares. Yeah, like yeah. literally everyone's so much more captivated by like what he did for like for, for homelessness and what like what you know. The adversity he pushed yeah. through. That's it. Mm. And so it's like wh what we think is like the, the, the things that are driving us actually maybe oh, yeah really. aren't yeah aren't really yeah it's definitely yeah. that's a great way to put it i think it's just the it's it's more so because it's the most measurable like yes. time's obviously so accessible to us and measurable to us mm. effort is like so perceived because yeah. everyone like you said has different experiences so it's hard to hard to hard to actually like quantify everyone's level sure. of effort i guess like like we can sit here and like we were actually trying to do it just then by being like we think it's actually harder if you did seven hours like with the yeah. sore calf but you don't know what the calf pain like yeah, it's man. hard to quantify it so i think yeah, we just yeah. go well times the metric mm -hmm. like yeah. and we use it like that but yeah. we, we do need to care more about like everyone's perceived effort yeah. Yeah. and you can you can it definitely shows especially on the bigger feats mm -hmm. you can really see when someone's pulled their heart out like even in fighting we, you can all see when a, a fighter is like just yeah. hard on the line and keep going for the it. Fighters that we love the most. Like Izzy Gastelum, yeah. like that round five, mm. like both of them. It's like I actually look up that scene, like where he's going into the fifth. I've looked that up so many times just to watch him be like, "I'm prepared to die," no. just like staring yeah. at him. Like, oh, dude. seeing that hard on display yeah. is just yeah. magnificent. Yeah, I, I reckon that's such a cool thing too. That measuring perceived effort, because mm. like what you perceive your effort is as an individual like you can you got the best judge of whether you could have gone harder or not right but then like people who have coaches and stuff are like you're not you're not putting in what mm. i expect of you and so like to try and measure perceived effort is so like it's mm. it's super subjective mm. of something that is like it just it almost can't be measured because yeah. depending on what like lens you're looking at mm. it from it's like there's always more 100 yeah. percent, and even within the person themselves it, it gets a bit skewed where in the moment you might think you're done and you, you or you are done and you call it but then five minutes after once you're comfortable you're like oh, i could have gone more but it's yeah. like five minutes ago when you were actually in the pain you said you couldn't you said you were done yeah. but now that you're feeling better you say you can and it's yeah. like where's how do you measure being able to find like when you're actually lying to yourself about things yeah. like knowing that you are you could have pushed further well, it just it comes maybe. yeah it's just yeah. being honest with yourself I think mm -hmm. like that's where it all starts and it's not it doesn't start when you're doing the hard thing. It's on the day to day. Like, don't lie to mm -hmm. yourself. Don't don't tell yourself you're doing a good job if you're not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to be honest about the little things you do each day, and that's where you get the clarity when you're in the hurt locker. And it's like, yeah. And I think that's why these like these big challenges and big goals are so helpful for us at like defining it because the next time you create a new standard or your like personal best, then that changes what your effort level can go to or at least your perceived effort because you're like oh well i've done that mm. so if i've done that what what's the next thing and has have i got the perceived effort level to match it to get me there 100 percent. and the it's making sure that you that you don't put a ceiling on it if you do fail or 
yeah. if something does happen. Like li- yesterday um, with the, the ice bath and going to that state, as I was warming up in the shower, I was like, oh, that was dumb. I'm not going to do that again. I, I said, I'm not ever going to do that again. I can't do that. And then I said to myself, I was like, well, wait a minute. Like Wim, if Wim Hof and people he trains can go in the ice for longer than the time I did, that means it is possible. So don't tell myself I'm never going to do it again. Just tell myself I'm not going to do it again the without side. the correct, like training <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah. with the with the yeah. amateur yeah, with the amateur level. level. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's very important how we frame those things to ourselves mm. and ensuring that you don't put the ceiling upon yourself. Like, um, you know, do you know Anders Hoffman? No. He he did the first full distance triathlon in Antarctica, yeah. and Yes Theory made a, a full length like feature film with him. It's called Project Iceman. It's a, uh, I think it'll be accessible to Australians 2023, but like uh, when they were filming it, like I saw all the stories and stuff as they were going, but insane. Like, yeah. like you, I mean, you have a better idea of anyone. Yeah, like bro, imagine yeah. doing a full length triathlon, like 3.9 swim, 180k ride, 42k yeah, run on, in Antarctica. Just, just, that it's, it's the swim that straight away just kind of oh. blows like my like perspective out the yeah. water. It's like, oh, I think it could be like this or... I would perceive it would be like that, but as soon as you're talking about a swim, yeah. it's like, how do you get warm from that? Like, how do you how do you actually get your body out of that? And once you've gone through the swim, is like the run easy? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, perceived effort. Yeah. Is he just like, this is a piece of piss? Mm-hmm. Like, this is like... And his whole thing, the whole line is, uh, what is it? Oh my goodness, limitations of perceptions. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. like what the whole film's about. That's what he's pushed the entire time. And I think it's, it's so true. You just got to continuously tell yourself that and understand that because the second you think that limitations are limitations and we have them then it's like no mm. you've lost yeah so i'm keen to see that yeah when is it coming out 2023? so they're doing showcasings in america at the moment okay. but i imagine they'll like they have to put that online or yeah. at least Surely. give others access to it they will yeah. well and but, they're big enough too yeah yeah series, but i'm yeah. so keen to see that because mm-hmm. It was nuts. They were like caught out in blizzards. And they had to, I think they had to postpone the race for like 36 hours or something. Because he was, they had this little tent set up and he was just stuck in this blizzard. What the hell? And I think he was like either mid-ride or mid-run or something. It's wild. He wanted to keep going, but the safety crew was like, you can't. Nuts. Like what? it's going to be an insane film. Yeah. I'm very keen to see it. Yeah. This is so up your alley. Yeah. That is cool. Like, yeah, I just... <laughs> environment experience like that. It's just like that. Dealing with yeah. that, having to just stop the race because of the environment. That's not So impressive. Yeah. One thing we do at the end, if you've listened to some of you may know, is like we offer, like we want the guests to give us a challenge of the week. So it can we want it to come from you. Um, it can be anything in relation to what we've talked about today. Um, right yeah. Marathon in Greenland. Greenland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I reckon that... I've, I've, I feel like the ice bath. Let's, let's go down that let's go down that route so mm-hmm. so at the moment so let me just let me clarify what was your what what was the record that you think you got to yesterday uh, it was like eight rounds of Wim Hof no I did more it, I didn't do I didn't count the rounds properly it was around 20 minutes maybe a couple more it, is is a 25 minute ice bath achievable <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely achievable but I would want to like, I want to require more something else before I go in there. Because for me to go back in, doing the same thing is going to give me the same result. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe that could be my challenge. Because I've the most I've done is, I think, 15 minutes. Yeah, let's... Uh, let's, let's 18? Yeah. 18 yep. minute ice bath. Okay. All right, that's achievable. Yeah, definitely. That's achievable. Yep, 18 minute ice bath, done. Yep, yeah. that's that's what I love. I love that shit. Now I'm nervous. Yeah. Just because yeah. of your experience, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that makes yeah. me nervous. And that hasn't been a reality for me because you did that. And then I'm just like, well, I'm not doing that until I know more about that because you've laid the path for me. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm like, oh, I'm going to get close to that because after this challenge, it literally <laughs> just hit me like, oh, God. Yeah. I need to be on for that. But I'm very excited. Yeah. Definitely yeah, done. And, and you're no. coming. Yeah. You're coming to an ice bath. You have to come to the Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah done. Yeah, yeah. Done. Yep. Fantastic. Hell yeah. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. It was mm. so so encouraging to hear about yes. your trip overseas and mm-hmm. the run, the mindset associated with it. So yeah, thank you for coming on and sharing. And for me, you've given me like a whole, like a different perspective on running, like a massively different perspective. Um, a bit more art and beauty to it, which is, which is awesome. Thankful. Thank you for your time, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Pleasure. Yeah. Peace.